trying to get a pro moto vlogging setup. Woo! Good audio, good video, mega crazy battery life, communications, the whole night with the perfect balance of reliability, ease of use, and quality. Well, I've got a set police that I think is the best <laughs> in those realms. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys how I set that up in this video. As far as I'm concerned, it is the best setup you can get in 2023. <laughs> making motorcycle video content for <laughs> over a decade at this point and have definitely gone through a number of cameras and mic setups. I'm gonna show you exactly how I set up a helmet here with video and audio inputs, communications, basically endless battery. I have it all work very, very conveniently. This is just my preference on how I like to run things. You can pick and choose from this and do what you like to do or get inspired and come up with something similar or something else. If you just wanna to skip to the installation or see a particular part of it, go to the chapters. Otherwise, one of the first things I wanna do is actually dig into all these different components here and explain to you why we've chosen those and what I think you can expect from this setup. So I think one of the first really cool things to tell you about this whole setup is that it works. Nothing here I'm gonna show you is brand new. This is all stuff I've been using for uh, like most of it over a year or variations of this setup. And the only things that's new in this entire setup is the actual mic I use on the camera. The mic I had been using, they don't make anymore. so. I found a new one, it's really good. We'll talk about that in a minute. Another one of the big things about this setup is that it's incredibly easy to use in the field. I could show you setups which would have a little bit better audio, a little bit better video. It's a real pain to do complex setups with multiple things, pulling in audio and video, trying to resync them later. As I got into more of the adventure bike riding, it's just it just doesn't work. You gotta have a system you can just turn on and have it work, and that's what this will do. It'll do it all day. Here's a few things that will not work very well with this setup, is like being in a potential downpour, and this is true of basically all of the setups, uh, GoPro, DJI, in this case we're using the Insta. Once you had an external mic to these setups, uh, they're, they're not waterproof anymore. Throw them in a Ziploc bag if you get caught in the rain. If you really have to have a waterproof setup, you may look at the Cinna. I, I've tested one of those in the past. It's not a bad setup, but it's definitely like a camera second and a communicator first, so you don't have a whole ton of control. But it does do some cool things, like it's just a one unit, works all at once, and it'll bring your buddies in too, if they're vlogging with you. It's waterproof, water resistant, right? I will say as a quick note though, I had one of the previous ones, it stopped working in 4K, and Cine's solution, when I asked him how to fix it, was just to not run 4K. And sure enough, that would fix it, but I was like, that's not a solution when people are paying this much money, and it says 4K. I even asked him, I was like, are you gonna change the advertisement that says it's 4K now, since it doesn't work? No response. So, you know, anyways, let's look at the individual equipment that we're gonna be using today, at least the main components. There's a lot of little things. Don't worry, everything will be in a list in the description. Let's start with the helmet itself. This is a brand new helmet that just came out. Not just new, like to me, as in it's a new helmet from Sadichi, exclusively on Revzilla, which means my discount code works on this. You can pop this off, run it with goggles if you want. You can do the whole crazy thing and pull the whole peak off if you want the jet fire look. It has an internal visor. I love that. Uh, they always market these things as adventure helmets. As far as I'm concerned, they're also just dual sport and supermoto helmets, uh, or just whatever helmets. <laughs> DOT, ECE approved, doesn't feel too terribly heavy. It feels actually quite nice. Um, by the way, that's another thing. People always see my helmet setups where it's got, you know, like at least three things and some cables, and they always go, oh my God, that's gonna be so heavy. These are the main components right here. There's no way this is even a pound. If this hurts your head, Anyways, um, yeah, fun helmet here. I wish it came in some more colors. It's just this in white, but it just came out, so maybe we'll come up with some better colors later. But uh, I've already done the thing where I sit there in the office editing a video wearing this for over an hour. I think that's always important to do. When you get a helmet, wear it sitting like in the office, like not out sweating. General advice from someone who used to sell his own helmets, take care of helmets when you're testing them out. Make sure they fit you well. And that's a really good thing to do. just sit there in the office in the air conditioning so you're not sweating and like do something, like, like, like wear it for like an hour, watch a show, do something. Anyway, this is the base of it. Oh, by the way, you'll notice it has a GoPro mount on top here. I think that's kind of cool. You don't see too many people trying to incorporate a mount from the factory onto their helmets. Neat. We're not gonna use it though, because I don't like the Teletubby look, but uh, I like the thinking though. That is one of the few new things too. And yes, whatever helmet you have will affect your audio. Like it's, you know, I can't, you can copy this exact setup, but on a different helmet, you may get a slightly different uh, result, but it should all be within reason. Communications are not necessarily necessary if you're just trying to have a audio video set up for your own personal vlogs. But if you do, this is the Cine Spider ST1. I've been running this guy for close to a year. 
and it's been a solid setup, it's fine. Always nice to be able to listen to your jams or off your phone, run things like your different GPSs, whatever, take phone calls, and of course, you know, talk to your buddies. Uh, annoyingly though, everyone still to this day kind of has to be on the same system, unless you get a full radio setup, which I run on some of my other stuff. We'll do a video on that at some point, I swear. <laughs> the camera itself is a Insta360 ONE RS. Uh, I know a lot of people get confused when I bring this camera up. They're like, oh, you're running a 360 camera as your main camera. No, this is the modular camera that they have. They can be, God, at this point, it was mainly three to begin with, but I've added several other things. This turns into numerous cameras. One of them is a 360 camera, but this is what's called the 4K mod. You know, so it looks just like most action cameras. Battery, uh, sort of the main recording module, SD cards go in here. Uh, it's got the screen and the buttons on it, and then the actual lens itself. This is the one you could pop a 360 one on. If you really wanna see a big deep dive of what I think about this versus GoPro and the other stuff, I would go to the actual video where I review this camera. I've got some pretty uh, spicy opinions about GoPro, and I'll say this. The GoPro is probably slightly better video than this. I don't know about audio, uh, but the newest GoPro, if you were to put it like head to head, I bet you the GoPro is gonna be a little bit better. But we're talking about like minor hairs here, and honestly, once you compress them and throw them onto YouTube, I don't think you're gonna notice it anyway. But this setup works. GoPros do not work. They just don't. They don't work out in the field. They overheat. You can charge this one while you're using it in the highest qualities with speed charging. It handles it. No problem, GoPro will overheat. GoPros are freezing up. They're having so many issues, and one of the big reasons I just stopped messing with them. And they just have no support. They never seem to fix these issues. Uh, this camera's been out for a while now. I've got several other ones that are several years old. Every time I connect them to my phone, like the phone app, it's like, oh, there's an update. They're always updating these, making them better and better and better. Uh, Insta's very good about support. And you can run a mic in with this very chill little adapter that's not a million dollars. I'll let you run power and audio in, and the audio is good. It's really, it's 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 good. Uh, helps when you pair it with a good mic, which I'm gonna show you here in a little bit, but that is the big deal there. That is what makes this such a good camera. And just been dumb reliable. Uh, the number of times I've had this freeze is very few. It, it has happened, to be fair, but so few, and that is just not normal. Compared to GoPro, oh man, it's a lot. One drawback of the Insta360 cameras that does kind of irk me a little bit, which is if you record for more than about around 28 minutes in, you will get a stop record, and it'll pick it, it'll start recording again, it'll pick up on a new file, but there's like a 10 second gap in there. This does make this some ways feel like an action cam from back in the day. It's kind of obnoxious that they haven't address this and fixed it. Personally, for me though, it's not normally a big issue because I rarely re just, just record, record, just to leave it running. If I am gonna leave it running, that couple second gap is not a really big deal. It's just something to be aware of. I'm not here to do a super technical breakdown of this camera. I have, like I said, I do have a review, but even in that one, I know there's so many channels, that's what all they do. They just do the tabletop, you know, show you every spec and feature about this camera. And I just, why cover that? They want to cover it anyway. Uh, come to me if you actually want to see how it practically works for a motorcyclist uh, in the real world. I, that's what I think I do pretty well. Most of these reviewers, not to talk crap about it, but they're going to use this camera for about a few minutes and then they're going to put it away and never mess with it again. I, on the other hand, use this as part of my job. This gets used all the time. On a plus though, as I almost dropped it, if you actually shatter this lens, you can just replace the module. You don't have to replace the whole camera. Where is the mic, by the way? The microphone, sorry, I forgot to bring it over here. Look at this little guy, it's got a bendy guy on it. I think it's from Mo Movo or something. This is advertised, at least by the seller on Amazon, and as being a moto vlogging mic. I've tested it, very impressed by this microphone, and it's not as expensive as a Purple Panda, which I've actually found, at least with the Insta, the Purple doesn't work quite as well. And then finally, you don't have to do all this stuff. We're gonna put a battery on the helmet. This will let us continually feed power to our action camera, keeping it just topped up all the time. And this is like my favorite part about this whole setup. This setup should be very convenient to use. This is all like one button start, bang, go, and it works. So let's get started. Also, if I didn't mention it, throw you down a towel or something, because you're gonna be rolling this helmet around a lot during this process. We don't wanna scratch it up. I haven't tried this, but I'm assuming I can just remove this screw and put it back in. Cool, no problem at all. Before we actually go about sticking everything onto the helmet, it's always a good idea to try to, you know, come up with your items and try to figure out where exactly you think everything's gonna sort of mount and fit. Side mounting these cameras, not a good idea in my opinion. You, you get a half of your shot blocked by the helmet, 
pretty odd wind when you go to highway speeds. Around town is fine. One of my favorite ways to mount these cameras is actually right up under the peak if you have a peak. But the problem is when you have a visor, it doesn't really work. That's gonna run into it. So if I'm gonna show you, we'll work on dual sport helmets as well, street helmets. We're gonna mount it right here on the front. Now I know you'll see a lot of people sell really cool mounts for certain helmets, don't, don't you don't need those. I'm gonna show you here in a minute the much better way of doing this, which will work on any helmet. This is just a more superior way of doing it. Anyway, with doing that and playing with the cables a little bit, I've also figured out that I'm gonna put my battery right here with the ports aiming towards the back. Do match well, don't they? To mount this, we'll get some alcohol, some paper towels, dual lock. This is like a Velcro, but much better than normal Velcro because it sticks to itself anywhere. It's the same sort of hard plastic all across and it doesn't wear out, not realistically in a time, <laughs> time period that would actually matter. Even with the helmet having some contours and this is not gonna lay flat against it, it will be fine. I promise you this stuff is strong enough that is not really a problem. I'm gonna get this a little bit warm before I stick it on. And just make it stick a little bit better than it would have otherwise. And kind of work it down. This is gonna be on there very good. This stuff is so sticky, you can actually overcome the adhesive. You go to pull it off and you rip off one of these guys. But by heating it slightly, we will be able to lift the whole helmet from this battery, no problem. One thing that's important to do is to try to make sure everything is kind of above the brim here as much as you can, the edge of the helmet. I've had ports and things actually break on cameras from having them hang too low. So when you put the helmet down, it smacks it. You don't have to have some setup where you have to like kind of stop and think about it every time you go to put your helmet down, how it needs to be sitting. because of the curvature of the helmet and the flat part of the battery, at least like 75% making contact with the Velcro, we're good to go, you know, it's not, not a problem. It still comes off easy enough if you wanna take it off, but it's on well enough that even if you were Jixer bro going mock Jesus, that's not gonna come off. You gotta remember, this is not meant to sit out in the rain, so if you end up in the rain, you're gonna have to grab this and pop it off throw it in your jacket, in your bag, your whatever. It's funny, I have so many actual really good waterproof travel bags and whatnot, but also literally the pocket of almost every one of my riding jackets has two or three Ziploc bags. You'll have to forgive me, I've had to move some things around because it's storming severely outside. Hell storm actually picking up out there. So I had to bring the car in. Anyway, it's fine, we're gonna carry on. That's what we do, this is, this is Texas. <laughs> so I'm gonna move on to the communicator. You need to kind of figure out where it makes sense to mount it. You might wanna put it here, but look at all this texture and the sticky mount they give you. This isn't gonna work. I'm gonna show you a way around all that. With these cables on here, Sin has done a thing where they've slightly curved the back side of this because they're trying to help you kind of hook under the helmet. If you actually have this low enough to where this tucks through, you risk the problem of setting the helmet down and actually having it putting a bunch of force against those cables. We don't want that. I'm actually thinking uh, kind of right in this sort of area right here. And also kind of neat to see, you see the cheek pad right down here. And this is a good place to sort of tuck this wire in without having to sort of trim anything, which you're gonna see we'll have to probably do on the other side. It's not a big deal if you have to, but it's nice to avoid it if you can. The way that this guy mounts is you it comes with this and it's got a sticky back that goes on there. And honestly, the place that we wanna put it, probably the sticky would work. But again, I'm gonna show you my method, which wouldn't matter where we put it. I do have to consider that when this goes on and off of here, which I do sometimes remove, I have more than one helmet that I run this on, it has to slide kind of down into this clip. So I gotta make sure where I have it at, that it has the room above it to sort of get in. Yeah, that'll work right there. Okay, this is the spot I wanna put it in. Take a little piece of masking tape just to sort of mark the bottom line and one of the sides. I'll recheck this before I commit to it just to make sure I'm happy with my lining. Ambulance is running around. I don't know if that's coming through on the mic, but hopefully that looks about right. Allow me enough room to come off. Yep, okay. I am happy with that. And that's gonna help me mark where I wanna put it. We're not gonna use the sticky and we're gonna mount this in a way that it doesn't matter what the surface is, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna use Suguru. Uh, this stuff is awesome, we've been using this for years. This is an awesome proven product. This has got kind of a silly putty consistency. It will bond to all kinds of surfaces and when it dries, it's almost like a rubberized plastic. If you buy some of this and you, you love it, don't buy a whole ton of it. I made that mistake one time because I. I feel like it actually has a fairly short shelf life, like maybe a couple of months or so, three or four months. If I still had any sitting around, I would probably just throw it out. This product does take about a day to dry. Mold this up on the backside here, 
push it on and then we'll remove any extra and it should look nice and clean. Well, I've got some grooves in the back of this mount here and if the putty pushes into those, it will stop the actual camera from mounting on. I think an easy fix there is I'm gonna put a little bit of tape just to cover these holes up. Another thing I like to do sometimes before mounting it, take a little bit of sandpaper and to just rough the back just a little bit. Yeah, it's got a nice sanded surface. Now, now, now here comes a bravery test. A little alcohol, wipe off some of that extra dust we've now made. We'll just clean the surface in general to prep it for what we're about to do. A little bit of tape and try to cover these strips here from the back side. It's nice and covered up now. That should keep it from squishing in. Best I can describe it as, it feels like silly putty. Work some of this around. That's one thing good about this so far is that everything is so sort of flat, matte black looking that this will all match really well. It takes a day to dry, so you have plenty of time to work with this. There's no reason to you know, go nuts and work fast and make a problem. All right, that looks good. And this is what's so cool. Like I said, if you had like a crazy contour or some weird shape going on there, well, this stuff won't care. It'll just fill it in. And I mean, I do have a little bit of one. It does drop off the back. The curvature of the helmet is sharper than the curvature of this. Uh, so it's no big deal. You just sort of force it on. The cool thing is it's basically gonna stay now on its own. I'm gonna get a small little flat head and try to just, it kinda helps smooth it over a little. Go around with a little bit of alcohol now to help wipe off any of this sort of residue. It looks good. Is it going anywhere? No. Is this necessary? Probably not. But it makes me feel better. Give that 24 hours and she'll be good to go. Let's address mounting the actual action camera. Now, I'm gonna put it here on the chin, like we were saying before. I love this setup, it looks good. And to do that, I'm gonna use one of these sort of action camera tripod mounts, combining with one of these just small arms, just give it a pinch more forward length to help get the angle right. Good thing with these modern action cameras, the field of view is so good, at least with the GoPro and the Insta. The DJI is actually kind of narrow. As long as we're generally pointed the right way, we should be good. And I'm gonna mount this thing basically right like that. On earth are you gonna mount this to that? Crazy textures, big flat surface. We're gonna use the Subaru again. This has already got good texture, so I'm not really worried about it. The helmet right here where I'm gonna mount the front here, we'll do just like before, we'll do a little bit of roughing up. See if one pack of Sugru is going to be enough. Mash this onto here. Push that down hard. Here about making contact. Yeah, a lot squished out. I need to twist it slightly, which is fine. You don't have to be in any hurry. This is like fine. And this is good. I think we'll actually be able to use just one because uh, we've got enough to have squished out here now that I'm gonna kind of work that around and I'm gonna clean it up a bit, start by mashing it down. And as I mash it down like this, I'm getting all kinds of, you know, fingerprints and whatever. But then if I just run my finger, smooth it over. Oh my gosh, it smooths over so well. We've forced it down. It's really worked into all the crevices and whatnot. You know, this thing has a nice hole in the back too, where those camera threads were supposed to go into. And I'm sure that they've got a nice slug of that inside there now. I need to give this like 24 hours for these to really dry before I continue. That's why I've done those first because the other things when we add mics and uh, other cables, it's actually all really easy. That's like the hardest work we just did. When we try to add all the other stuff, we don't want those still drying. We want those fully dry. Come back tomorrow and finish it up. Tomorrow, tomorrow. It's tomorrow. It's actually been about 19 or so hours since I did this and still not 100% dry. It's close enough though that we can carry on. I just need to be a little gentle with these points. Let's put the Bluetooth on, let's finish that up. The mount is probably dry enough, but just for good measure, as I clip this thing on, I'm gonna keep my thumb kind of under here. If I've done this right, nice. In these Cinna kits, you'll get speakers and microphones, some various little Velcros and other small things that are helpful, little pads that can go behind the the speakers connect to the Cinna and then kind of fish all this wiring up into the helmet. We're gonna also attach the other microphone, the one for the camera. And you see they're both little bendy boom mic things, which is helpful, but we're still gonna kind of bind them together. This is also helpful if you don't have uh, one on a boom. A lot of the times they're not. The Cinna mic has a Velcro backing on it and the little Velcro uh, strips that it comes with. So it'll also be behind a cheek pad, which will hold it too. And the lower part down here, I'm actually gonna connect them with a piece of tape. And you won't see this too. This will be behind the cheek pad. But for the other side of it up here, we don't need to do any tape for that. And we're gonna give these microphones a little extra help. These are little baby dead cats. Don't get upset by the name, I didn't name them that. Now what's so fun to do with these is to put them on your pinkies like this. Now, these will help a lot of the wind noise. Now I've tested this microphone literally just as is and it seems to be 
okay, but it's never a terrible idea to put a little bit extra fluff. We're gonna put one on both of these mics. They've got a little band that also goes around and snaps and we'll wrap them around both mics when we do that to really kind of help hold them all together. It'd be kind of a snug fit on the cine mic since it's so big and a looser fit on the other one, but it's just fine. If, you're, if you set your mic up and you're getting bad wind noise, Stuff like this is always a good idea. You can even take it a step further. You might see in some of my other helmet setups, I've got literally fur like this, almost like a troll-like fur, like lining the whole inside right by my face. Uh, again, everyone always thinks, oh, doesn't that get all up in your, your mouth while you're, you're riding and doing whatever? And it's like, kind of, it can, but typically what I do is I trim it. I, take, I give it a haircut. After I get it all up in there, I kind of see where it's gonna be touching my face and I remove it. I'm gonna loop it around both booms this time, the little, little stretchy guy. So we go around both of them. I've also positioned both of the button ends where they're gonna be against the helmet, not against my face. But yeah, look at that, there we go. We have two little fluffy mics in there. Again, yeah, this is not a big deal. You're not gonna feel this like everyone thinks this is gonna be like oh, all up in your mouth. Not really, it's fine. Plug her in right between these pads. And again, that'll be a great place to get the wire down into the helmet. But from there, what we really need to do is remove these cheek pads. Let's put um, some little pads right inside the helmet for us. Some little speaker holes. It already has like a felt. The speakers should just almost stick. Oh yeah. And they're literally the exact size. So it's like they, they know what they're building these two. One of them's a shorter, wire and that's gonna be the one closest to it. Check that right there. I don't have to fully remove it, but I'm gonna at least pop this up like this for the moment. And the other speaker wire all the way up and around to the other side. Connect in over here. The microphones, I'm gonna put them up on this side. I think right there actually may be a great location for them. Should clear everything. The cheek pad might have a slight bulge right there, but this is under the strap. You're not gonna really notice that. You really can see once the cheek pad's back in, it really will press the whole thing in really well. The Cine kits tend to come with a whole bunch of these little Velcros, more than you need. So I'm gonna put my little piece of Velcro right there. All right. All these extra wires here, they'll just mainly sit underneath your, your liners. You won't really notice them. And we can clean them up though a bit if we want with a little bit of small tape. Uh, but I'm gonna wait till I get the other stuff connected on here from the uh, actual action camera because we have a few things that are gonna enter in from this side. And this mount, even though it's not 100% dry, I mean, you could pick the helmet up from this one if you want, it's no problem. That uh, Sugru is such a great material. I like to use some little Allen screws when I put these on instead of the big adjusters because it's a little bit of a cleaner look. And that's probably a good angle right there. You always have to consider your head is, you know, might have a little tip down. Let me demonstrate to you guys something here real quick. Uh, this is the, uh, mic adapter for the Insta as I literally throw it. It's very affordable, very small, very nice. I've got the microphone inside the helmet there and uh, this is the cable that goes to it. And you wanna plug them in and make sure you're getting audio. You see, you can see the actual audio jumping up and down with the mic plugged in, right? Now, uh, a lot of times I don't want this directly just big straight cable coming off of the camera. So let's switch that to one of these little guys. Look, it's a little mini extender. It's got a right angle. This is really cool. This will just be more clean up there, but we always want to recheck, right? All right, look at that now. Now the microphone is just giving a solid, sorry, it's really tricky to focus on this. It, it's not fluctuating. This is something you always want to check. And I love that the Insta has got the actual little sound bar on there. That's really cool. Not a lot of them do that. So let's try this other one I've got. Now we are actually getting it to work. We're getting audio coming back in uh, just as we were before. So, you know, the pins and how they're all set up on some cameras is different. Save yourself some headaches and check all that ahead of time. It's recording. Hello, testing, testing the camera. Can you hear me? Hello. Awesome. Okay, little thing, we have to make sure all that is working as it should. Camera back in. I've also gone for both of these with a right angle connector. Here, I love these two because these are also braided uh, fabric cables. So I think they just hold up a little better. Looking at a good place to run them in, I think you kind of come in right here under the chin guard, secure the cables. I think maybe about right like that. For such an operation, I really like these little cable holders where you use a small zip tie. I think it's always important not to have big dangling cables. We want to minimize the cables on the outside of the helmet, you know, get them tucked in as soon as we can. A little alcohol. Oh, my, my, my white and spotted cables, like the most color this whole helmet has on it right now. All right, that's looking good. I just did something silly there. I actually knocked off this mount here and you can see I actually was able to ball this up. It's kind of hard. I'm not gonna try to reuse this, but this Sugru, ah, and I know better. I've done this before, but luckily at least it kind of came off clean. I'm just gonna have to re-glue that. Because this is part of secured though now, I, I, I'll, I'll carry on. Just a, just a warning, 
Remember, give that Sugru the true 24 hours, and honestly, if it still feels squishy, you might have to give it more. Let's go ahead and stick our battery back on. We need to finish routing the power cable for our actual battery. It's gonna have to loop kind of under here. It's gonna plug in right there. And notice here too, I got a nice USB that has the correct sort of angulation. This does present one slight issue. We've got this sort of skirt that slips up in there. We actually have to cut a slit to let the cable through. This will tell us where we need to run our cable in, which is right here. Now, I've done this to a number of helmets and never really had an issue. And you really need to continue that notch all the way down. Because if you don't cut this thing all the way through up to the soft bit, cheek pad will never really reinsert correctly. It'll always give you problems. Now we can do a little bit of cable management inside the helmet. From here, we have still a number of cables that need to go into the helmet, and you could just stuff them all in here and stick the other cheek pad and the and the main liner back in. Just hope that it all works out. And I've, I mean, I've done that, even my own self, and it, it's fine, it can work, but I've got myself some little strips of tape here. Try to secure these wires in a few spots so we don't end up with like a big ball of them somewhere, because you will fill that on your head and it'll be terrible and you'll have a headache. It's all clicking together good. I do have a few cables. I gotta make sure I don't pinch when I button this down. And a lot of times too, these cheek pads, when you do have cables and stuff like that running behind them, they are a little, just a little more snug to install than they normally would be. I can't feel any of the cables. Everything feels correct. This feels good. I like where the communicator is. That's a decent place to get to. Ha, well, I'm cool now. Hey everybody. Yeah. Let's glue this back on and then I'll go test this thing. So it's been another 24 hours and my Sugru is fully dry this time. Uh, I should have known when you have a big thicker chunk of it like this, you got to give it a little more time. I also set it out. It's been beautiful. Uh, so we set it outside after the rain subsided. Again, this is not meant to be a full review mega test of any of this individual stuff. The main goal of this video is to really just show you how I set these, this helmet up. Make it really convenient for myself. That's the big thing there. We don't want to have a setup that's tricky. We want to find a balance between having high quality audio and video and simplisticness. These are things like cost. And for myself at least, this is this is the balance. This is the uh, this is the way. I'm gonna let you guys get a little test. I'm just gonna kind of continually talk, which God knows I can do, so that you can hear what this sounds like at different speeds and different sort of volume levels of my voice. This is you know. For the most part, speaking in a pretty normal uh, voice right here uh, with the visor up as we get up to speed. Let's get up to speed here. How does it look? When you romp on it, you still hear pretty good. I really like this mic. I think this is a good mic. I've got this camera also right now on what's called one button start. Uh, just going back to the convenience of it, which means I literally uh, I have to get used to it. It's on the top. I've been I've had it flipped over on my other setup for so long. So yeah, it's right there. Uh, one big tap. Uh, always good to have like a one of your mares where you can quickly kind of glance down at it. I think often what I'll do is if I'm on the road, you can't, you're not gonna be able to hear the beep if you're going at speed. So you just give it a quick glance and let me see, can I see it? I gotta get used to it. Where is the LED now? Oh yeah, yeah, it's up in this corner. Yep, it's going. <laughs> Took me a minute to remember there. And yes, this is the uh, X3. We have a video on that as well. That's just a you know, extra little fun setup. But yeah, basically I could be cruising along and all I simply do is tap that button and within about four to five seconds, it should be on and running. Here, let's get some speed up again with the visor open. Yeah, a throttle there. There's 70 with the visor open. Uh, yeah, let's get up speed though and shut the visor now and see if it sounds much better. Uh, should have reduced the wind a bit, but with our wind uh, precautions, uh, as well as just how well this setup seems to handle in the first place. I am running the Insta360 in minus uh, 6 dB. Uh, there is some dB adjustment. It still does auto adjusting too. It's kind of like a combo of both, uh, which is like the best <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah. And another thing too, with the big old battery here on the side, you're gonna go through numerous SD cards before you ever have to uh, recharge this big old battery. But what is good to remember if you're out doing like a whole long day of riding is to occasionally press the little button on the side. A lot of times as you cycle the camera on and off, it will like, the battery somehow sees that. I don't know, like blips the something on the USB. Notice that you, you stop recording and automatically is charging because you'll see the little lights light up on the uh, battery. 
but there are times it, it won't. And that's not just like an Insta anchor battery thing. I've had different batteries, different action cameras and seen the exact same thing. So just try to keep in mind to occasionally give that little button a tap. Good day here, a nice sunny day. All these action cameras always look really great. <laughs> nice little sunlight field of view here. Very nice. Uh, again, I mean, you could really tip these cameras sort of up and down quite a bit and not have to fight it. Back in the day, that was always a, a struggle to try to find the, uh, the best setup for that. As mentioned before, I've used this setup all the time. It's the setup that I used uh, for the last basically year now. It's been on several trips with this camera. I've actually been on several trips with this camera where it was my solo camera. I didn't even bring like another vlogging camera or anything else. I just brought this single camera or maybe I brought this one plus like one 360 camera. by the way feels really nice and comfortable i guess you know <laughs> giving me my my thoughts on that as well i like it it's gonna be a good solid helmet definitely a little wider than that scorpion i had and uh, as much as i like the modularness of the scorpion <laughs> it's really nice uh you know feel a little safer in a dot ece normal helmet <laughs> so if you have any questions leave them below i'll answer those for you uh, if anything I've missed out that you want to know about this setup, uh, hopefully this has been a good detailed video for you to let you know everything that you need to know. Next video already out on Patreon. If you do join the Patreon, be sure to join the Discord so you can uh, chit-chat with me in there. Otherwise, we'll see you next video. Are you trying to get a pro?